John Harvey, great to see you again. Good to see you too. Now this is the Australian Grains Industry Conference, an important week for the industry as a whole. How is it especially significant for GRDC? The Australian Grains Industry Conference is probably the premier event for the grains industry each year. It's held down in Melbourne and it has about 800 delegates that turn up to discuss industry issues. From my point of view uh, as the MD of GRDC, it's a great opportunity to network but also to hear some of the issues that might be arising, particularly in the marketplace, so that we can adjust our research program to deal with the issues our customers might have. So it is a really important uh, time for us and this time round particularly important because it gave us an opportunity to make a really important announcement, which is our bilateral agreement that we've just signed with the Victorian government, which will lock in $60 million for R&D, largely to be occurring in Horsham, and very much focused on developing the next uh, generation of pulse crops, uh, making sure they've got the quality for our markets, also looking at building the agronomy for our high rainfall uh, systems, and also looking at pathology, making sure we've got the diseases that emerge under control and looking after our genetic resources, the Australian Gene Bank at Horsham. So really big, big, big announcement and a really big opportunity to lock in that investment from the Victorian Government and from GRDC to those important issues. Why is that going to make things better? Well, it's going to make things better because we need rotation crops, OK? We can't just grow cereals. We need to have crops that we can grow with cereals that give us a disease break and put nitrogen back in the soils. And, and that's why pulses are so important. But pulses in themselves need to be profitable. Growers can't afford to grow pulses unless they can make money out of them. So our challenge is, is to make sure we've got the disease packages, we've got those right for the pulses, we've got the quality right for the pulses so that they, we get higher prices, and we're also improving the yields. So the announcement that we've made will invest more um, effort and a longer term effort. So it gives some stability to the research community, the people that invest their careers in actually developing that next generation. So by signing a five-year agreement, and potentially if it's successful, an opportunity to actually roll it over for another five years, gives those people some stability in their careers and holds them into agriculture and, and not go off into medicine or other areas of research. So this is the second that we've signed. The first was with Curtin University in West Australia, and that was primarily to establish the Centre for Crop and Disease Management. But the bilaterals are really a way of us implementing the national r &E strategy for the grains industry. You're always talking about the need to get the results of research into the hands of growers as quickly as possible. Now, one of the significant developments recently in, that, in, in terms of that endeavour is a new extension platform online. What's that all about? We're forming a community of practice where we get all of our pathologists together into a network on the, on the internet. And when an issue arises, they, they can actually work it through and get the best advice back to growers. So one of the key um, functionalities of e-extension is what we call ask an expert. So if you've got an issue or a concern or a, a, a disease that you're seeing on your farm or you're just not sure what's happening in the crop, go into e-extension, ask an expert. The ask an expert team will make sure that that question actually goes to the person with the most expertise to then be able to answer it. Uh, and, if, and if they don't have the answers, they can network amongst themselves to give the best possible advice back to growers. And I think that's a really innovative product which will help growers deal with issues as they confront them, but also hopefully end, at the end of the day make sure growers make the most they can out of their crop in terms of profit. That sort of stuff also happens in social media to a great extent, like Twitter. And I've noticed recently that GRDC's been much more active in that area. Uh, recently we have invested in a, a social media manager and our, our objective there again is to make sure we get the outcomes of research to growers as quickly as we possibly can and, and to build that interaction with growers, that one-on-one -on -one interaction that you can in social media uh, and also between growers so growers can actually interact on and see issues and discuss issues. A lot of people including grain growers are a bit standoffish about social media. What should a grower do as a first step to dip their toe in? I'd be saying to you, you know, have a look, download it onto your smartphone, get the app there, start following us on uh, Twitter and liking us on Facebook and that will give you access to some stuff you might not have known about that could be quite useful uh, to improving the performance of your business. A new financial year has just begun. How ready is GRDC for this year in terms of its investment portfolio? This financial year we're looking at investing over $190 million in research and development and which, which is critical to uh, building the technologies and, and the practices and the new varieties that growers need for the future. 
how much of that is ready right now and has people beavering away? It's contracted, it's actually happening and, and that gives us a head start. That means that we're up, the growers will see the benefit of that research sooner and that's what we want. John Harvey, thanks for joining us on Ground Cover TV. Thank you.